Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited for this video. This video is going to be a little bit different, but uh, believe me, I wanted to make this video since probably years uh, because I wanted to really share with you another things that is not always uh, reviews or computers or something like this, like tech videos. I want to really share with you experiences and I really want you to share as well a lot of things that I learn. As probably you already may know, I live in Germany. I'm an engineer, a researcher, and I have been living sick here already almost for six years and I, am, I come from Mexico and it, is going, it, it has been a complete journey and it's just amazing experience that I have but as an engineer and as a researcher I learned a lot of things and I think for today's video I'm going to give you 10 tips that I consider to be probably the most important and most simple and easier tips that you can have in order to make your life as an engineer as well as your private life a little bit better and a little bit easier. So stay tuned in the video if you want to learn more and see you now. So the tip number one, and it's going to be really easy, really straightforward, and you probably already had a lot of time this. But believe me when I tell you, this is probably one of the, the best things that you are going to, to, to learn and put in practice in your life as an engineer and private personal life. If it works, don't touch it. And you had this probably since you are a kid. If it works, don't touch it, and believe me, it's going to make your life so much easier and so much better if you really follow this. Because sometimes there is no need to change something, to do something. And if you work for a company, maybe you are a production engineer, maybe you are a quality engineer, maybe you are a paint engineer or a, a design engineer, simulation, robotics, automation, everything is going to be sometimes easier if you really take a look to what you really need and the things that you really need. And sometimes you are always excited, ah, a new machine, a new robot, uh, a new pro uh, pro uh, process, or something like this. But believe me, uh, try to always ask yourself if it is really need, needed, if you really need to change something. Because if don't, if it works, it works. And you can take the most simple things as an example. For example, you have a paper printer. Does it print? Yes. Do you need, do you have different requirements to print paper? Maybe more pages per day, better quality? If not, the printer works, leave the printer like it is. Maybe it's a little bit old, but if it works, leave it there. It's going to save you a lot of time, it's going to save you a lot of money, and it's going to save you a lot of stress in your life if you really always take care in the things that you really need to change or that the things that really need to change something in order to fulfill still to still fulfill the objective so this is very easy and believe me uh, it helped me a lot as well in my personal life and and my, my life working in companies in the university it's as simple as it is and it's going to help you as well maybe in your apartment maybe you want to change your tv because there is a new tv but do you really need to change your tv it works? Yeah, good. Do you really need to change it? Probably not. Do you, do you need a new phone? Probably not. I don't know. Maybe because the new iPhone 13 is there and you have the iPhone 12, but is your iPhone 12 working? If it is working, then probably don't touch it is the best option. And this applies to a lot of things, believe me. Or maybe the robot in the production line is, wor is working, but you want a new robot, or you want, a, you want the robot is, uh, instead moving from this to the, uh, from A to B like this, you want to move to, from A to B in this way. But, I mean, if it is working here, and there is no need to change the process, don't touch it. Save the time. 
So that's the tip number one. So tip number two, your time worth a lot more than money. Probably this is not going to be as easy as explained as the first tip, but time is the only thing in the whole world that you cannot get back, that we cannot get back. And time's, time is really worth a lot. And sometimes as an engineer, as a researcher, you are always excited to do something and to, to destroy something and build it again or build something new, get the new robot, get the new process done and print the new stuff with the new 3D printer that you got. But it takes time, it all takes time. Yeah. And in to, together in relationship with the, with the tip number one, if you do not really need to invest your time in some things, as a researcher, for example, if uh, you don't, if you don't need to check which 3D printer works better than the other one, because there is a lot of research already been done, don't use your time in doing something that is already there, for example, because you can maybe use your time to make different things, better things, other things, new things. Or for example, if the computer that is in the old office is not working properly and it is an old computer, maybe, I don't know, six, seven years old and you like computers and you like a lot of computers and your boss told you, hey Jorge, can you repair the computer? And maybe, but you are not maybe the expert in computers and it's going to take maybe two or three days of your time, yeah. And a lot of people never see this and never see this perspective of an engineer and a, a, a researcher, a worker, but your time as well in the company or if you are an entrepreneur as well, your time worth money. And if you invest two full days of your time repairing a computer that has not value at all, Maybe the computer was 50 US dollars, 50 euros, 60 euros, and you invested 16 hours, or I don't know, 10 hours to make it easy, 10 hours, and your salary is 30 US dollars per hour, and you invested already 10 hours, that makes already 300 US dollars of your time, and the computer was, <laughs> the computer doesn't, it's not worth that money, and maybe a lot of people don't see this, but your time was more than money. If you save your time, you save the stress, and at the end, even the computer, if it's work, it's not going to be a reliable computer, probably. If you can, you can take those 300 euros, go to an online shop, buy a new computer for 300 US dollars, 300 euros, and you have a new computer, stress-free, no time wasted, and the old computer, you can even I don't know, give it for free. Maybe get 10 euros back in, in, in eBay or something like that. And that's what I mean. Sometimes there is no need to invest your money in a lot of things. And of course you are going to learn. That's how you, that's how you learn things. But there are some times for learning and there are some times to keep it as easy as it is. And that's really, this is going to really make your life easier. And if you work for a company, if, as I said, if you are an independent entrepreneur, if you have your own company, always think like that. Your money, you can never get back your time, sorry. And money comes and goes. And computer, devices, robots, machines, processes, it's not worth more than money, more than your time. So please always take in consideration that in order to make something. If you really need to invest your time, do it. And if you really, or if you really want to learn that specific, do it as well. But do it once, do it two times, three times, learn. And if the fourth time you still have a computer broken, don't waste your time, get a new computer. So that's the tip number two. Now let's go to the tip number three. Tip number three is ask help if you are not an expert. There is no rules. There are no rules. There are no, there is no one that is going to tell you or you, you are not born with knowledge and 
books of and books of knowledge in your head and to to know everything yeah and it is perfectly normal to not know something actually it's a good thing because it motivates you as well to learn to learn new things to do some to do new things but sometimes you need help and there is a lot of people that they never ask for help and maybe you maybe i am an expert in design of 3D printers and you want to learn about 3D printers and maybe it took you six months to develop something that was really easy but you never wanted to ask for help because you wanted to do it alone or you are you were shy or you thought that it was better to show that you could do it alone but sometimes maybe it's better to ask for help maybe I was hey Jorge do you know how to design a 3D printer? And I will tell you, yes, of course. Come, let's do it together. And I will try to show you and to teach you, you know, that you learn as well to do it. And this, this is a, a, an error, and this, a, this is a mistake that a lot of people make, and it is not ask for help. Sometimes it is like this, it is like that, and alone you will never go to any, to any place. So this is a really easy thing, it's a straightforward as an engineer, as a researcher, if you are a PhD student, if you are a master's student, if you are a normal student in, in the university, ask always for help. Alone you are not going to make a robot, probably not. So that's the tip number three, let's go to the tip number four. The tip number four is as well in the relation of the, of the already three first tips and it's, it is pretty easy as well. And Sometimes it's better to purchase, to buy some stuff, than do it yourself. And it's again, okay, but if you don't do it yourself, you are never going to learn. But hey, I don't know, do, do I need to learn how to make a 3D printer? It is required in my field, learn how to make a 3D printer? Hey, maybe not. And a 3D printer, you can get 3D printers already in 150 US dollars. Two, three hundred euros are already good printers, and maybe you are going to spend six months, one year building a 3D printer, and the results are not going to be the best, probably. Of course, you learn some things, but do you really need to learn? Uh, it was your objective to learn how to make a 3D printer. For example, when I was working in the university as a production, we were a department of production engineering automation, manufacture and production engineering. And hey, we use, for example, 3D printers to build components that we need for all production processes. But we, are not an ex we, we were not experts in 3D printers. We were not experts in materials for 3D printers. So what do we do? We buy things that there is already there because in some other place of the world, there are experts in 3D printers and there are experts in 3D, printer, 3D printed materials. So why do we need, we are not material scientists, why do we need to do research in the chemical components inside materials and filaments when there is already experts and amazing people doing that. So sometimes it's better to purchase things, sometimes it's better to buy some things. And this applies to a lot of things in your life, in your private life, in, in in every aspect of your life, to be honest, sometimes there is a, a, a lot of other things that you can do with your time again. And DIY, there is a lot of DIY videos now in YouTube, like do it yourself, your own closet, do it yourself, your own table, which is, I think, is a pretty good thing because you learn a lot. And if you like it, do it. But if you don't have time to spend in a new closet at your bedroom, and there is a lot of companies and a lot of shops that they sell closets exactly in the way that you can imagine. Hey, probably it's maybe better to buy it, yeah? That's a, that's a very incredible tip as an engineer, as a researcher, uh, uh, as an engineer in Germany. Uh, sometimes it's better to purchase things than do it yourself. Of course, money is always a thing, yeah? But that's it's going to be in another tip. So let's go to the next one. So we just spoke about money, yeah? And the next tip that I have for you as, a, as an engineer in Germany is avoid cheap solutions, if you can wait. Cheap solutions are not the best. 
And after a lot of experience, believe me, cheap solutions are not the best. And they are not going to solve your problems as an engineer. Sometimes, because money is very important, of course, always, you, don't, you cannot afford the things that you would like. And it's pretty, it's, 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 it's pretty much normal. Believe me, believe me, if you have requirements that need something and you buy cheap solution, it's not at all going to help you. If you buy a 100 US dollars graphics card, it's not going to help you to fulfill your requirements and to do your job that in two, three months, you are going to be buying a new graphics card because that's who it is. Or if you want to save $20 buying something from eBay instead of buying it new, Makes no, makes no sense. Believe me, if you buy it new, you have warranty. You can return it if it is defect. Uh, you, knew that, you know that this is at least new, that no other people used it, and you never know how the used component is going to work. You, don't, you never know the reliability, how many time was already in usage, and you are all, only saving 20 euros. Maybe you don't have the package original, maybe there is one component missing that you didn't know, and you only save 20 US dollars. If you are young, I was already, I'm still young, and I was as well young, and I had no money at all, and I know what it means to buy cheap stuff. Believe me, that's why I'm, that's why I'm telling you this is because of experience. But it's not the solution, probably, for a lot of things. And if you are already in a professional level, or if you already have a more stable life, and you still want to go cheap on things and you have money, you have resources, maybe your university has a lot of uh, financial resources, maybe you made a grant application and you got the resources, maybe your company has a lot of money and you still go cheap, I'm just going to tell you it's not going to give you any solution. It's not, and you say, ah, yeah, I saved 100,000 euros. Maybe now you save 100,000 euros, but you never know if it, if this machine that you worked, that, that you bought after one year is going to be already obsolete or it's not going to be working properly and then you need to buy a new machine, then you, you want nothing. <laughs> you want totally nothing and I made a lot of mistakes like this. Personal mistakes, buying stuff, building stuff as an engineer as well, after years, after years, always chipping because of course for me, living abroad, money was a huge thing and I never had the money to be honest. And I chipped a lot in a lot of things. And I think I never got something good out of it. So believe me, if you can really avoid chip solutions, do it, yeah? So let's go to the next tip. So the next thing, the next tip is for your whole life, is going to be really helpful and it is being organized. Being organized is going to save you a lot of time, it's going to save you a lot of stress, it's going to save you probably a lot of money as well and it's just one thing, you need to be organized. But let's not confuse being organized to being a little bit crazy about organization. It's not the same. If you are really crazy about this thing, it's not going to allow you to react fast. Yeah? For example, let's see that the printer is the printer is not working and the production line needs to print things. Paper, paper printer. And ah, where is the printer is there, but I put it back there in the in, in the other warehouse and I know that is there but sometimes this excess of organization is going to is, is not going to allow you to react fast yeah and that's why maybe a lot of people is like hey I have my cows here but if you ask me for a pen here is the pen yeah? so as always you need to have a perfect balance in organization and fact and, and quick reaction. You can keep organized everything as much as you want and everything as much as, as clean as, as you can. But this organization that you have it needs to allow you to react fast if someone or something is changing. Yeah, because maybe tomorrow a new production line is coming and your warehouse is going to be 
totally change, you are going to be crazy. And you are going to help no one because of the stress that you have, because someone changed your organization plan. So being organized is amazing. You know your times, you know where the things are, you organize your task of the day, which is an amazing thing. But if you overdo it, like everything, if you, are, if you, are, if you overdo something, it's going to be totally counterproductive. So being organized, but being able to react fast to changes. That's one of the amazing things. And that's a tip that I can really recommend you. Be organized because you need to be clean, because you need to be organized, because it makes you a lot times more productive. But you need to be able to react if something changes, yeah? So that's another tip. Let's go to the next tip. This tip is pretty straightforward as well. And maybe you heard a lot of minimalistic YouTubers, influencers out there. And believe me, there is a reason why. And the tip is get rid of things that you don't need. Jorge, but I am an engineer. I need things. No, that's not true. There's a lot of things that you do not need in your professional life and as well in your private life, personal life. Get rid of things that you don't need. Let's go just some small example and then let's go to big examples like always. You are an engineer, you, are a, you repair computers probably. You are in the IT department and you repair computers. And through the years, you got a bunch of cables, for example, power cables, video cables, but not only video cables, you got VGA cables, DVI cables, HDMI cables, display port cables, and you have the power cable of computers, you have the power cables of laptops, and you don't even have the laptops anymore, for example. And, but you keep them in your warehouse, or you keep them in the office, because you think probably one day you will need them. That's not true. Get rid of things that you do not need. If you have 50 VGA cables, get rid of 40 and keep 10 safe in case you need a VGA cable. If you have 100 DisplayPort cables, get rid of 90 DisplayPort cables and keep 10 in case, in case you need it. If you have, I don't know, 20 pens, do you need 20 pens? Get rid of them. You, you, there is a lot of things that you do not need in your house as well. Maybe in you, in, at your place you have six TVs, one in each room. Do you really need six TVs? As a researcher, you have the Prusa 3D printer, you have the Anycubic 3D printer, you have the uh, Ender 3D printer, and you have a new 3D printer there, a new 3D printer there, the two 3D printers that are already not working and you have all, you, you, already, you only have them there for, for repair because one day you think you are going to repair them. Get rid of those things. If you don't need them and if they add no value to your life, to your day, to your productivity plan, get rid of a lot of things. Yeah? Maybe you, or you have the iPhone 12, you have the new iPhone 13, but you have as well a Samsung Galaxy because you like as well Android and you have the Oppo phone and you have the other Sony Xperia phone and it's like, do you really need those phones? Do they add value to your life, to your company? Maybe you can even get more value out of them if you get rid of them. If you sell them, if you have a friend that has no phone and you have three, four phones laying there, maybe it's better. And that's an amazing tip. And Believe me, together with being organized, get rid of th things that you don't need. It's going to life automatically more organized because you are going to be only focusing things that really have and add a value to your day, to your life. And this applies for everything. Professional career, a student, in your, if you are a master student, if you are a PhD student, if you are an engineer working for a company, if you are an entrepreneur, if you are a PhD researcher, if you are a full-time professor, uh, get, rid, get rid of things that you don't need. This is really, really helpful. So let's go to the next tip. If you really want to become an expert, this is the tip. If you really want to become, become an expert on anything, maybe in robots, you need a guide. You need guidance to do it. Uh, 
there is a lot of people that they think that they will be experts on something just because they studied something, just because they work on something, and that's not true. To become an expert on something, you need hours, hours, hours of doing it, of practicing, on going deeper in the topic. You need at least 10,000 hours of the same topic in order to become an expert. You need at least maybe 10,000 hours, and 10,000 hours mean years. And if you think that you are going to make this alone, you are totally wrong. You will never become an expert being by yourself. Why? Because that's, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty big mistake, I will say. When you are a university student, for example, uh, you studied mechatronics engineer as, a, as, as myself, you are, you are covering a huge field of, engineer, of engineers' uh, topics. And then at the end of your bachelor's degree, you are focusing only in, on intelligent machines. And you were here, and now you are going a little bit specific. And then for your master's degree, you focus only in robots. Then you are here already. And then if you are willing to keep going in your academic career and you pursue a PhD, as well in robotics, but it's not going to be again in general robotics. It's going to be in maybe robotics control. And you are already here. And this level of expertise that you have, probably you are going to be an expert after your PhD, but you are going to be an expert in a small thing. And if that's what you really want, you need help always. And then you are going to become an expert in robot control. Yeah. That why do I tell you that you are not going to make it alone, that you need guidance, that you need a guide, that you need a mentor? Because the more that you close yourself into this specific topic, the less that you see around you, the less that you focus on other topics, and the less information that you are going to get inside of your head about another topics. And you are just blinding yourself. But if you have a mentor, if you have friends that are, that are as well experts in other topics, this is not going to be the case. You are going to be, become an expert in your topic, but you are not going to be blind and you are not going to be close to other topics. And this is very important. You need people to talk about the things that you are doing. You need a mentor to guide you because, as we say, we, did, we are not born with some gifts to being a researcher, to being the best engineer, engineer that is working for Mercedes-Benz and you are working in the main company of, of Audi in, in Germany and we are not wrong with, with those skills, we learn them and we usually, we usually learn from other people as well and we take a lot of other people as an example in order to pursue this expertise. So that's the tip really, if you want to become an expert on something, work very hard because you really need to make that practice in order to become an expert, but don't do it alone, because at the end then you will be an expert in one small thing and you are missing the other things. So let's go to the next tip. So the next tip is as well in relation to the previous tip. And the next tip is, <sighs> get to know people is the best thing of the learning curve. Have new friends, to meet new people, is amazing. It's an amazing experience and it's going to give you a lot of different perspectives of the life and it's going to give you a lot of different perspectives of the professional career in which you are now. If you are a robotics engineer and you met maybe another 10 robotics engineers, maybe you are part of a community of robotics engineer. It's going to be so much fun. It's, you are going to learn so many more things and your, your world is going to be really open to, to new things. That's why, for example, when you are pursuing a PhD, one of the main objectives as well of being a PhD is to publish your research in conferences and go to these conferences that usually are in other cities, in other countries, and the main thing is not just to show what you made. The, the main purpose of these conferences, of these events, is to get to know people. This typical networking. And it's an amazing thing. But not only in the professional career, you are not only 
meeting new PhDs or another master students there or maybe some co-workers. It's about, about your personal life. If you are invited to a party, in this party there is a lot of international students probably, and you get to know them, you're going to learn a lot of things as well. And the learn curve that you have in your life, it will never stop if you, are, if you keep learning, if you keep getting to know new people. And as a researcher, as an engineer, that's the, the, that's the amazing thing. Maybe today you, do, you have no knowledge to design a bike. But tomorrow you know people that love bikes. And this love for something that other people have is going to come as well a little bit into you. And it's going to, okay, maybe I have no idea about bikes, but maybe I can start doing something in bikes. And then you will learn something about bikes. And this learning is so more important than so many things. And a lot of people forget about this. A lot of people think that they are going to work do their job and everything is going to be perfect, which is also okay. But if you go to your work and it's not about wasting your time talking with people and just doing other things because you have as well a job to do, which is okay. Or maybe if you're an entrepreneur, there is not everything always about chilling or getting coffee with people. It's about learning together with these new people. And sometimes if I, when I was, for example, in the university, a normal day in the university, I spent maybe 70% of my day in the university doing research my, with my students and doing things of the PhD and of the research. But the other time, I was talking with other PhD students. I was talking with other professors I, and I was really trying to get to know as much people as I could because for me as well as a foreigner, it was an amazing experience and you learn a lot of things. And that's how you met people. That's how you, you get to know more things and that's how you make your life as well easier, getting to know people. A lot of people forget about this. And that's pretty sad to be honest, that a lot of people f focus a lot in themselves and doing the job, that they forget that uh, life is about having contact with other persons and that's how you learn probably more things that you're sitting in front of your monitor and that's a really a nice thing nice tip that i wanted to give you so let's go to the next tip so this is the tip number 10 this is the last tip of all of them and i tried to make it as compact as i could but i think i extended a little bit so i hope you enjoy it so the last tip the tip number 10 is don't stop learning <sighs> this is very difficult because learning is everywhere and what I mean is like, don't close yourself in a small bubble in which you are not allowing knowledge anymore. Nowadays, there is a lot of opportunities to learn some things new. You have YouTube, like now. You have a lot of movies now. You have access to a whole collection of movies in which you can learn a lot of personalities. Or if you are an actor, if you are pursuing an actor career, you have YouTube. You have Wikipedia, you have a lot, you have the internet, you have a lot of time, you, you have ResearchGate, a lot of uh, access to a lot of research, just in your computer, in your phone, you have access to everything just at your hands. And some people don't see this. Some people see the phone as a chat device to send messages, which is also a, 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 a use of the device. But there is a lot of learning opportunities and you have them, you have them there. So never stop learning. Even if you are, I don't know, 50 years old, 60 years old, and you think you there is no way to learn something new. There is a lot of things to learn something new. Maybe you were a machine designer your whole life and now you are in the 60s or I don't know. And you discover 3D printers watching a YouTube video or watching the TV hey, you are still young, you can still learn about 3D printers. And YouTube is there and there is thousands, hundreds of thousands of videos about 3D printers. Or maybe you want to redesign your office because now with home office, you want a better place to work. You have no idea, of course, of, about uh, design, uh, interior designs, but there is YouTube, there is a lot of amazing, uh, 
media content, a lot of influencers, social networks that are going to allow you to learn from them. They are not going to teach you specifically something, but they are going to allow you to learn from them if you want, if you allow them as well. So never stop learning. Even if you already have a PhD, even if you are already a professor or doctor engineer and you work in the best university in, in Mexico, for example, there is always opportunities to learn. There is always new people to know. And that's, that's is how I'm going to conclude this video, which is never stop learning. There is a lot of things out there and maybe it's going to cost you time. But if you really want, it's out there. The whole knowledge of the world is at your fingertips. And I'm not joking with that. The whole knowledge probably of the entire world is there. You just need to look for it and you just need to motivate yourself to wake up in the morning and learn something new. Uh, I'm just going to tell you there is as soon as you learn something new, maybe a language, maybe you want to learn a new language. Now you have Duolingo, you have a lot of apps, you have Babel, Duolingo, YouTube videos in other languages, Netflix in different languages with subtitles, and amazing content out there at your fingertips that are going to teach you and allow you to learn a little bit of French, for example. And as soon as you learn something and you are motivated to go to France and you notice how big was the impact of this motivation that you had of learning something, once you are there, it's going to change your life forever. And you will never abandon this motivation of always try to learn something. And as I said, I'm, I'm already a few years here in Germany and I, I'm still not done. I'm still not done. I still have a lot of plans and I, I'm always trying to learn something new. I'm trying to become an expert in things that I already think, talked, I was good on them. And I'm, that's the thing, you just need to keep forward, you just need to keep pushing, you should never stop learning. Of course, you can as well focus in things that you like more to become an expert, to become that expert that we already spoke about. But learning new things is an amazing experience and I can always recommend it to you. And if you are interested, for example, in languages, that's another whole video, languages. And if you are interested on my experience about learning German and English, for example, and I native speak Spanish, please just like the video, comment it in the video if you would like to know about my experience learning languages and I'm going just to enjoy as well sharing you, sharing with you my experience in learning languages. So I hope you like the video. I hope you really keep something good from this video to you. And any question, any comments, please just let me know in the comments and I will do my best as soon as I have time to answer you. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.